Hi everyone, this is Chuck Smith, the Chief Operating Officer at Peace Park Conservancy, and welcome to the second in our series on development of the Interpretive Master Plan for Pease Park. We're joined here again today with Angela Davis and Aaron McClellan from MuseWork, who have been engaged with the Conservancy in the development of this plan that we've been working on in partnership with the City of Austin Parks and Recreation Department. In our first episode, we've identified three overarching themes, and today we're going to dive into the first one of those, which is the park reveals the natural history of the park and the intersections and tensions that exist with our evolving place in that space. How was this theme developed? When we first started talking to people about their relationship with Peace Park, so many Austinites said, we love Peace Park because it's so natural. And we, we go down there for, for a nice walk or a stroll or a hike. And it just feels like you've left the city. It just feels like you're a world apart. But then we talk to um, ecologists and plant botanists and people who understand the science of landscapes and ecosystems. They say, yes, all that's true. It's, it's a beautiful space. It's green. You get to get away from the city. But also we've impacted it as people. All the choices that we've made as we've built our city have impacted Shoal Creek and, and all of our other natural spaces. And so while you do get to get out in nature, it's not the way it would have been if we hadn't touched it. This theme is really about being honest and upfront about the tension between loving the park, uh, but not loving it to death. And I love that Peace Park Conservancy is really leading the way when it comes to balancing recreation with restoration and conservation. And looking into these stories, looking into the um, science of how the ecology in the park operates and then how we as people impact that ecology, that's a really interesting way for everyone to start understanding our, our relationship with the natural world and how we can improve it and how we can live in a more balanced way with these green spaces that we care so much about. Why is it important to raise awareness about the natural wonders that exist in the park? Because it is such a wonderful experience to troop around in the middle of the city and then find a spring bubbling up out of out of some boulders and to find like a little grotto full of uh, water loving plants in the middle of the city. It's just such a special place. The landscape, the way it was formed, there are these there's segments of the park where there's canyon walls that you can sort of hike down into. There's sections of the park with gorgeous wildflowers. There's sections of the park with gorgeous forests. There's so much to explore. It's such a diverse a set of environments. I just don't think people really even know all the treasures that Pease Park holds. I would just add to that, raising awareness about the, the importance of the Peace Park natural environment, it, it's really meant to also support the work that the Conservancy is doing, right? Sometimes things like battling invasives, it isn't always pretty, right? Like when you have to, you have to, you know, rip out a bunch of plants that other people thought were pretty, those are pretty flowers. Well, it turns out that they're, they're not native and they're not good for the park and they choke out all these other plants that we need to have for a healthy ecosystem. Uh, and so if we can educate people about how these things that may seem counterintuitive at first glance are actually really important to preserving the park environment, I, I think that that can help support uh, and build support for Peace Park Conservancy's work. Right, and I think this is an important theme because as you learn to look at both the wonders of the natural world, but also to look at the landscape and really see how people have changed it, it does help people understand the need for restoration projects, the need for ongoing conservation, and it helps them understand this thing that we love, uh, we can play a part in protecting. So while the park itself was donated to the city in 1875, the reality is that native peoples had had a relationship with this landscape for, for thousands of years. What are some ways that we might honor that relationship and how might that be used to help raise awareness about the importance of, of stewarding this land? Archaeologists and native people tell us that folks have been living here in the Austin area for over 15,000 years. So people lived here when mammoths and giant sloths and all these crazy ice age animals still roamed around the place. And 15,000 years of people 
drinking from the springs that are now in the park, um, camping and hunting along Shoal Creek. That's more time than, than most of us can really hold in our minds. But that's how long Native peoples have had a relationship with this landscape here in Central Texas. So any opportunity that we have when we're telling the stories of the park to include traditional knowledge or information that tribes share with us about stewardship of the land, it's just an excellent opportunity to think about our relationship with the landscape and take some traditional wisdom into, into our hearts and minds. Shoal Creek runs through the middle of Peace Park and it's prone to flooding. Is it important or how can we share the impact that humans have had in essence to cause some of those problems as well as address things that we might do to mitigate that effect? It's one of the experiences that a lot of people in Austin have had with Shoal Creek. It's one of the things that people know is that Shoal Creek floods. We think of it as a real problem because of the way it, it impacts our, our lives in our city. But it's interesting because a hydrologist once told me that, no, these creeks are supposed to flood. And I think what he meant by that is that in central Texas, with this rocky terrain and little narrow valleys, flooding is part of the natural hydrological cycle. The creek is a thing that floods but naturally, it's really set up for that. The native plant communities, the floodplains, all the natural parts of the creek's ecosystem are about building resiliency around flooding. Of course, we have made changes to the hydrology. And by that, I mean, we've changed the landscape by doing things like paving roads and building buildings so that rainfall no longer falls onto vegetation and then seeps into the ground but it falls onto hard impervious surfaces and then it whooshes down into the creek. And so it exacerbates flooding. Flooding is natural. The way we're experiencing floods now is not. And we can do things about it. And one of the things I love about the work that Peace Park Conservancy is doing right now is that you and the city of Austin are using nature's toolkit to, to combat some of the worst impacts of flooding. And nature's favorite tool is plants. So there's so many, I know, planting projects and reseeding of areas and reforestation of areas. And that goes a long way in a natural watershed to slow and absorb rainfall. There's always going to be flooding. Flooding is natural, but we can make it less intense with some of the practices of revegetation that are happening in the park and throughout our city. Peace Park Conservancy is interested in working to improve the ecological health of the park. Why do you think that's important and how might people engage with us in that effort? It is so important to take these natural spaces, these green spaces that we love and look at them as a whole ecosystem and a healthy park with lots of different kinds of plants and animals helps everyone. As we've been working on this plan and talking to experts, I've really come to understand that a healthy landscape, the whole balanced system, it connects to everything we care about. It connects to our water, it connects to our air quality, and I think very importantly, it connects to our quality of life. Austinites love to get out. We love to be in our parks. And as we all come together and help with restoring a place like Pease Park, we're really just helping ourselves because we're making a, a gorgeous place that's going to be there in the future for all of us to enjoy. I think it's important for us to recognize that the park is quite large and it at 84 acres, this ecological work is not something that can all be done at once. Like this is going to be sort of a long-term effort and a long-term game. Being able to highlight the importance of it and tell these stories is I think just another way hopefully that will be able to engage uh, volunteers and other members of the community to be a part of those ecological efforts. I absolutely agree. I think that telling the story of why you're working on restoration of the ecosystem is an important part to getting people engaged in helping. And I know people are already coming out to help with planting days and in other ways, and people can help just by taking care of their own yards, especially if they live in the Shoal Creek watershed. Part of the reason this theme is in your interpretive master plan is because this restoration process will take so long and because it's really a group effort. Talking about why, talking about the science behind it, 
is an important step in that effort. So is there anything else that you'd like to add about this topic? I would just say that I think one of the really important things about this topic, it's not all doom and gloom, right? It's not just that mm-hmm. we, we've paved over so much uh, land and now we have this, you know, these crisis floods. It also focuses on individual empowerment. We can talk to people about not over fertilizing their yard. So there's less runoff into the creek that impacts the health of the creek. When you choose to do some outdoor landscaping to your home, you can choose to use less impervious cover that will help with uh, runoff and, and flooding issues. Uh, so we, we really encourage the Conservancy to talk to people in a way that empowers them to make their own choices at home that help support the, the park and the Conservancy's efforts. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today to talk about this very important theme in the Peace Park Interpretive Master Plan. Please join us for the next in our series on the plan. Thank you so much.